start dying and it's really bad on your way out the door maybe you can roll me a bottle of water and then I'll just I'll make you I didn't get immunized they got immunized yes we got sick Part of bloom, yeah. Yeah, horse flower. <laughs> and so when you learn just one new wild edible and you learn how to identify it properly, that's 300 more things that you can include into your diet. Maybe. Isn't that amazing? Great. That's great. Do you need the flower as well or just the meat? I promise we'll get to that. <laughs> I'm building up the, uh, the excitement. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, relax, and I don't mean these kinds of weed. 
Oh. Because literally, if you kick off your shoes and step on the lawn, get drowned. Again, we're outside, so we get three things automatically. Too. We get exercise because if I'm standing here and the wild edible is over there, I gotta walk over and pick it. We call that exercise. Does it seem like all of a sudden there's planes, trains, autos? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. We also get sunlight, we get vitamin D. And we get fresh air. We get health <laughs> benefits. In other countries. How many people were aware that wild edibles were healthy? Show it hand. So, how many people eat wild edibles regularly? Less hand. So if we all know that wild edibles are healthy, why don't we eat them? I which ones? I'm which ones? I don't know which ones. Anything else? They're bitter. Dogs pee on them. Pollution, we don't know where to pick them. We yeah. don't know because of pollution where to pick them. Dog mess, exactly. Maybe you <laughs> live in a city. You don't want to make them the big. Would it be accurate to say that the biggest we don't pick them is because we're afraid we might pick the wrong thing. So fear prevents us from reaping health benefits, right? It's very common. This fear is instilled in us from a very early age. When we're just a small little kid, we use our five senses to learn about this planet. We go and we walk and we, we pick things, we touch it, we smell it, we look at it, we listen to it. And then the last thing we do, but then we hear mom or grandma or dad, and he comes over and he says, don't eat that. And the kid says, what? <laughs> and the parent sometimes says, oh, it's dirty. And the kid says, what? And then in an effort to just kind of deter them, we just say, because it's poisonous. And we have no idea, most of us. We have no idea if it's poisonous or edible, and yet we think it's better to be safe than sorry. Which I agree with. I think it is better to be safe than sorry. But unfortunately, the end result of that kind of education is that we're afraid of plants. And then we become adults, and we've never tried them, and it's even more foreign. Unfortunately, he's 
starve to death, but somehow either the author, which unfortunately I like that author, I don't know why he does that, but somebody didn't like the story. It was like, we're going to starve to death, we can't really sell that. So they romanticized this kid that wore off society, and one of those parts was eating wild plants. After he died, scientists studied wild peas, the plants that he supposedly led to his demise, and not one experiment found that they were poisonous. I eat wild peas all the time, and I'm still here. So, this makes it simple. <laughs> let's make another yeah. film that's called uh, Back to the Wild. Or, uh, <laughs> poisonous and how dangerous is wild edible harvesting. So I started conducting research and right away I got really confused because there's two um, ways to think about wild edibles. I found one that was Native American or indigenous tribe kind of way of thinking which said there are no poisonous plants. If you know how much to eat, what season, what part, there are no poisonous and then there's the scientific chemical lab that says everything is poisonous. And I have examples. I have two books. I have one written by a toxicologist, really thick book. And I have another plant written by my friend Karen Sherwood who partakes in the Native American belief. And in both books, the funniest thing is they list a lot of the same plants. So Karen Sherwood says mint is edible and here's all the benefits. And then in the toxicology it says mint is poisonous and here's all the negative effects. Come on, mint! It also says that garlic, cherries, peaches, and apples are poisonous. And you know why? Because a lot of foods have those slight amounts of anti or alkaloids to prevent us from eating it year round. So if you're looking at chemical structures, of course you're going to find negative ones. Actually, in small amounts, those negative alkaloids actually contribute to our health. Like the arsenic and cyanide in apple seeds explodes cancer cells. Wow! If you eat a bucket of apple seeds, something bad might happen. But if you eat five apples and, you know, 25 seeds, you're going to experience health benefits. This is, I learned this from Ann Wigmore's best friend, Don. We lived at his health retreat for about nine months. And he actually forbid us, when juicing apples for cancer patients, to pull the seeds out. That's how strongly he felt about it. <coughs> so, again, I'm really confused. I don't know what's poisonous, what's edible, who to believe. Because clearly there are plants that we shouldn't eat that can harm us. So what I did, I searched most poisonous plants of my area. I went on Google and I said, I live in Ashland, Oregon, what, what are the most poisonous plants here? And I found a website for poison control. And it only listed 50 plants. And I thought, that's not that many. If there are over, um, I believe the number is like, I don't want to get it wrong, but it's in the tens of thousands of plants in North America, excluding mushrooms, and only 50 plants that I should stay away from, that's not very bad. If I learned one of those plants every single day, in 50 days, I would know what to stay away from. And so I recommend one of the things that you use, you Google poisonous plants. of a 
the lion. Great at least. My personal belief, and if you have a notepad, this is where you should start writing because I'm going to give you some of my, my wisdom. I treat every single plant as if it's poisonous. Though I think that very few plants are poisonous, I treat every plant as though it's poisonous. Because the first time I eat a plant, I'm taking a risk. It's a small risk, but I'm still taking one. When we're kids, our parents are experimenting, they're giving us new food. And sometimes we have an allergic reaction to that food. We eat peanuts, we break out in hives, or our throat swells up, and from there on out we know no more peanuts. And at a certain point we stop experimenting. We grow up, we're 18, we know what we like, we know what we don't like, we know what we can't eat. So food experimentation stops. When we start eating wild edibles, we resume food experimentation. And the reason I'm so cautious is because even though Sergei says something's edible, even though somebody else says it's edible, it might affect your body differently. So when I encounter a new plant, I always do so cautiously and I never eat a lot at once. I have three simple rules. Number one, don't eat something if you don't know what it is. I do this not only for wild edibles, but for store-bought food. You know, big long chemical names. If I don't know what it is, I can't eat it. If you go on YouTube, you can check out my song. It's called Don't Know or Don't Eat Something If You Don't Know What It Is. I was getting a lot of emails one summer about you know, I love wild edibles, I love the work that you do, I go out in nature and I just pile stuff in my face and then I think, oh, maybe I should find out what that is. And I just got really tired of fearing for people and answering these same emails that I wanted to make it very clear. So I created this little hip-hop song, it's funny, meant to be funny, about how silly some of us can be sometimes. So first rule is don't eat something if you don't know what it is. Second rule is start small. So for example, I take a new piece of something, whether it's dandelion or a new plant, and I'm going to eat a little tiny amount to see how my body reacts to it. If you want to be even more cautious, just rub it on your lips. Because if you feel any burning or discomfort, that's a sign that you should investigate further before eating. When we are hiking on the trail, we always experimented on my father. <laughs> because he spoke the least amount of English and we thought if we lost him, it would do the least amount of damage to our family. <laughs> Again, that's rough and black humor. <laughs> Rule number three is don't mix your greens until you know how they react with your body. Basically, you take a bunch of different wild edibles and you throw them in a salad and then you get a reaction. What is it from? What caused it? Could have been that sing uh, the singing nettles. It could have been the miner's lettuce. Who knows? You eat mono wild edibles until you know how your body reacts. Yeah? So, memorize these rules. I might quiz you later. Uh, and those of you who, who pass with flying colors, I might even give you some prizes. <laughs> if I'm nice. One last thing before we start rolling is I invite you today to use all of your five senses very important. Our senses are meant to keep us from harm. Might snow, I think. <laughs> when we're kids, we do this. As adults, we forget. As adults, we just look, we don't like, we move on. So let's, let's unlock our inner child. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use our eyes first. We're going we're to look at stuff and we're going to say, oh, 
that looks like it might be edible and look soft. Whereas that tree trunk looks hard and it's communicating to me that if I bit into it, maybe I'd break my teeth. And the next thing we're going to use is we're going to feel, right? Because that's the next thing that extends from our body. What does it feel like? Some plants feel like cardboard, like this dried leaf. I probably don't want to eat because it's communicating to me as past my prime. Why should we eat this when we have greenery? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to smell. What does it smell like? Very important. As we get closer to our mouth, our body crucially starts investigating whether it's good to eat. Often plants that don't want to be eaten smell really horrible. It's toxic. You smell it and you want to get away from it. If you don't smell it and just put it in your mouth, you don't know until it's in your mouth. The next sense is our sense of hearing. Listen to the plant. Now Native Americans, again, they used to say, actually listen to the plant and hear what it tells you. And in modern society, that sounds crazy, like... But I can tell you this, that when I was on the trail for six months, I lived in nature. I could tell you what weather was coming, and I didn't have an app for that. I could tell you if it was going to be a rainstorm or a snowstorm. I could tell, I mean, I don't, I don't even know where it comes from. Like, sometimes the hair on my body would stand up and I was like, there's going to be lightning. And we all have this gift, but we're so distracted by TVs and our finances and our relationships that we lose it. But if circumstances ever required it, you get it back. Until then, you can just listen to exterior noises. Is there a guy spraying something that we shouldn't be eating? Is there a road nearby? Are there dogs? You know, we listen for things that could possibly jeopardize the, the quality of our food. And then finally, we eat it, we taste it. That's the last test. So we can rub it on our lips, we can put a little piece under our tongue, and if it's uh, sensitive, burning, discomfort again, you're going to look it up in a book before eating it any further, or ask an expert. And those are the ways that we use our senses. Now, today we're going to look at some plants. Some plants I'm not going to know because I'm, you know, not everything that grows here grows where I'm at. I'm going to only discuss the plants I'm confident about. You can ask me stuff, and if I don't know the plant, you'll have to excuse me, I'll just say, I'm sorry, I, I have to look that one up, because I want to be absolutely positive the information that I'm feeding you. I also want to invite you to just soak it in. If you learn just two plants today, maybe we'll see 15, maybe 20, but just set your goals to a realistic place. If you learn just two plants for real, that's enough of a start. So don't, I don't want you to be overwhelmed. Uh, because two plants, that's, you know, that's good, that's substantial, that'll get you into the habit. And then once you're addicted, it's much easier to go. And then the last thing I say literally before we start is that, um, well it's, it's really helpful to describe the plant to yourself. So a lot, a lot of me, a lot of, after I'm done talking here, a lot of today is going to be about what does it look like to you? And basically on that note,
This is just a little cheat sheet for you to take home, take one top of the road. <laughs> this is a quiz for you guys to take later on, so... I've made this. Basically, if you look at it... Name these brands on the right, name these plants. What I realized is that most kids have no idea what this is. Most kids can name every single brand. Most adults can name every single brand.